Yeah, so I believe it was October 26th of 2008. That's when Gabe Sapolsky had uh, gotten fired from Ring of Honor. So it's been five years already. And man, was it a good... It was a pretty dark day for Ring of Honor, I would say. In retrospect, was it the right thing to do? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not really sure. I don't think Gabe Sapolsky... He hasn't... With this whole Dragon Gate USA thing, it's kind of hurt his reputation. You know, I think if he was that great of a creative genius, you know, like people used to make him out to be, I think the Indies would be a lot better. And this just kind of sucks how this one guy, this this guy, has kind of taken the Indies and... The Indies suck because of Gabe Sapolsky. Or he has a big reason to do with the Indies not being that great. Let's say that. I think that makes more sense. I wouldn't blame it all on him, you know. The Indies are very competitive. It's fucking retarded if you think about it. Like the Indies are competing against each other. It just that just does not make sense to me at all. But for this video, for people that don't know, Gabe Sapolsky used to book Ring of Honor. And when he was in charge, 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, through all those years, he was named, I think, PW Torch or the Pro Wrestling Observer, the Booker of the Year for each and every one of those years. You know, Ring of Honor was so critically pra praised, the most critically praised promotion in the United States in the 2000s. It really was. So who is this guy, Gabe Sapolsky? He's actually a uh, Jewish man. And I bring up the word Jewish because it ties into Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman was actually fired. I didn't know this until recently, just looking it up. But he was actually fired from uh, WCW, I believe, in 92. And uh, I believe he was actually fired. He filed a lawsuit claiming it was anti-Semitism as to why he got fired and was fired by Bill Watts, if I'm not mistaken. So then he started ECW. And then in ECW, uh, this guy came along, uh, Gabe Sapolsky. You know, and I'm, you know, he put two and two together. I'm sure, you know, uh, you know I think uh, Paul Heyman saw, saw a lot of himself in Gabe Sapolsky and kind of took him under his wing. He was kind of like the guy that did promotional stuff, you know, behind the scenes stuff would help out, you know, doing whatever ECW needed. I don't know if he was really Paul Heyman's right-hand man, but, you know, the guy did did have a, a big association with ECW. So when ECW shut down, uh, ECW's former distributor used to be uh, RF Video. They used to, you know, tape the ECW shows and sell them through RF Video. So I think Sapolsky had a job with RF Video and, you know, became more powerful after ECW went out of business and decided, you know, RF Video needed a new source of income with, you know, ECW going bankrupt. So it was decided that he would take this new promotion called Ring of Honor and pretty much, you know, it's pretty much used to be what PWG is now. They would take all the, the best talent among the indies and just bring them together. Like Christopher Daniels, Lowkey, and Brian Danielson were the three biggest stars on the indies in early 2002. And, you know, they would sell the shows through RF Video and then Ring of Honor. You know, they, they basically were what PWG is right now. They would run shows every single month. And the uh, mastermind... The guy had the, who had the most creative control during that time was was probably Gabe Sapolsky and maybe Robbie Feinstein from RF Video. You know those guys, and uh, I think there was a guy named Greg something. Can't remember his last name, but but yeah, during the first you know from 2002 to 2008, everybody thought Gabe Sapolsky was great. They thought he was you know a genius, a creative genius. All these five star matches, all these great shows. Great show after great show. But then somewhere along the line in 2008, I think, um, you know, I would blame it on Carrie Silk, and I felt like they were running way too many shows. Uh, Gabe actually got fired in October, October 26, 2008, at the um, Homicide Weekend. They actually brought in Homicide from TNA because that weekend, you got to remember, that weekend they were missing Roderick Strong, Brian Danielson, and Nigel McGuinness. They're three, arguably the three big best wrestlers that weekend. And I think Carrie Silken, you know, I've talked about this before. I'm sorry if it's, I sound repetitive, but you know, Carrie Silken was looking at the crowd and felt like the crowd in Edison, New Jersey was uh, very, you know, displeased and not having a good time. And, you know, and he didn't like all the talent that Gabe was bringing in. And then I heard rumors that the Dragon Gate guys weren't getting paid when they went out to Japan. So I think um, the main reason was he thought Gabe was spending too much money on extra talent.
or you know wasting too much time and extra talent. That was a big reason why he got fired, and you know the the company wasn't really make turning a profit, even though they were you know putting on these great shows. So uh, that might have had something to do with it as well. Um, and the economy. You know, let's not forget. You know, October two thousand eight. That was one month after you know the big thing with the economy happened. I think it was September two thousand September eighteenth two thousand and eight. That's when you know the economy really uh, you know fell off. You know. So that had a lot to do with it. So, you know, a whole bunch of different reasons why Gabe got fired. But uh, also, I, I think he um, didn't want to be on TV. I think Carrie Silken wanted to grow the product and make it more mainstream. If you remember after Gabe left, uh, I think Carrie Silken really pushed hard for Jerry Lynn to win the ROH world title. A lot of that had to do with The Wrestler, the movie The Wrestler. He wanted this, to kind of show, you know, kind of tell the same story with, you know, a 40... 40 plus year old guy winning the ROH title like Jerry Lynn did, you know, being on HDNet, getting the HDNet deal. I think Gabe Sapolsky was definitely against that. I think Gabe was even being, was even against uh, going on pay-per-view because he had a really tough time booking the pay-per-views because they were all like three months delayed. So he kind of had to make, you know, create a, a booking side for the pay-per-view audience and everything kind of got out of whack. So uh, j just a lot of uh, headaches were involved in 2007 and 2008 with Gabe Sapolsky. A lot of people didn't like the product in 2008 with faction warfare. And, you know, a lot of people didn't like Jimmy Jacobs and the Age of the Fall storyline. And, you know, maybe there was a little bit too many shows in the middle of 2008. I, I, still, thought, I, was, I still thought Ring of Honor was fucking awesome in, in 2008 because it, 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 the big shows were still delivering. I, you know, Supercard of Honor 3, Death Before This Honor 6, you know, Northern Navigation, you know, I still thought they were hot. You know, I still thought they were putting on enough great shows. There was a lot of filler, yeah. But, uh, you know, you could always say that, you know, people would always make the defense that, you know, well, the reason those shows were great is because Gabe was bringing in so much outside talent, but it really wasn't his booking that was getting it done. Uh, yeah, so so that, that has a lot to do with it as well. Some people would argue against that. And since Gabe Sapolsky's gotten fired, you know, he really hasn't proven to be the uh, biggest creative genius in the world. Um, you know, the, the Dragon Gate USA and Evolve product just, you know, hasn't taken off. Uh, you know, you, you, I, you, but you, you can make the argument, though, maybe if Gabe had a full roster to play with, maybe he would, um, you know, be able to get a lot out of these guys like he did in the past. You know, so let's give Gabe, I think you could give Gabe credit because, you know, the, the Ring of Honor did have great personalities, great promos and great storylines, you know, in the heyday. Uh, you know, so, you know, Brian, my friend, the next big thing, a lot of you guys do know him, he would make the argument that, well, you know, it wasn't really Gabe, it was the talent. You know, you had Joe and Punk were probably booking their own stuff and cutting their own promos. Well, that's, you know, you can look at it that way, but also, I feel like you need to have, just like when you go for acting lessons, the acting coach is supposed to get the best out of you. Like Paul Heyman in ECW, before Austin cut that promo, Austin said if it wasn't for Heyman, he wouldn't have ever been able to, you know, cut such a great promo because Heyman got the best out of him. He's, you know, he, he got it out of the wrestler. So I mean, you know, so maybe you want to give Gabe credit for getting the most out of his guys, but getting them to open up or, you know, getting them to be a little bit edgy and you know creating you know pretty decent storylines for them. You know he did come up with some pretty good storylines in 2008 as well, like the Jimmy Jacobs and uh, Austin Aries storyline. The reason it worked is because you had two performers that could pull it off. I think the problem with Dragon Gate USA and Evolve is, you know, a lot of the talent uh, in Dragon Gate is Japanese, but you know. Even when they do try to run storylines with the American wrestlers, they kind of flop and they're just not very, um, they just don't go over that well. It's just, I just don't think he has enough variety of personalities other than maybe Chuck Taylor and Johnny Gargano. There just really isn't anyone else that could pull off a good story, um, you know, by talking on the mic. You know, you know Ricochet, A.R. Fox, and you know, a lot of these other guys, it's just, it's just not those type of guys. You know, maybe if you had like Cole and Elgin. You know, maybe maybe he maybe Gabe Sapolsky would be the type of guy to get you know something good out of Elgin, because a lot of people are kind of you know, a lot of the guys in Ring of Honor right now they just don't have, you know, that multi personality syndrome that could really take you over the top. 
Um, but maybe a guy like Gabe could get, you know, even guys like O'Reilly to open up even even a little bit more. Maybe even Eddie Edwards, you know, give him some type of, you know, some type of, um, you know, direction with his personality. You know, a, a lot of these guys just, you know, it, it just it just seems like they're just stuck. There's just no way out. And uh, even Davey, too. It just it seems like Davey is directionless. There's just, not, there's just not a lot of... I just don't see a lot of hands-on creativity with Ring of Honor. Maybe if Gabe was back in Ring of Honor, he could be the guy to get the best out of these guys. But with the Dragon Gate USA Evolve roster, it's just... I just think it's a lost cause. It's just not that type... It's not... Th that roster's just not built for storylines the way, you know, Ring of Honor used to be. I, so maybe if Gabe had an all-star roster to work with if these all these companies weren't competing with each other maybe it'd just be easier for them to get more out of these guys so um so that's pretty much it guys i mean do the indies suck right now i wouldn't say they suck i, I still think pwg is a great company i know a lot of people have their flaws with it but you know overall i i think um ring of honor is frustrating right now it's it just seems with this whole sinclair thing they're not really going above and beyond to deliver in the ring and to, you know, they're not working hard enough to get per these guys to open up on the mic and to tell better stories. They're just not doing it. Um, it, it just seems very, very, a lot of these guys just seem very green. And even some of the guys that they're bringing in, it's just, I just reading some of the comments, I have to agree. It feels like a developmental territory right now with uh, ROH. Um, you know, Chikara just kind of, you know, a lot, and a lot of it has to do with guys just going to WWE, people just moving on. It's just a cycle. We're just stuck in a very, very, you know, dull cycle right now. The indies are very, very lonely. Um, but, you know, the WWE just has a certain way of doing things, and it's really not for everybody, though, you know. E even though Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton are in the main event spotlight, you know, they, they should be tearing it down every night, and... You know, you just have to have more patience with the WWE. But the Indies is something where I think you really need to, you know, just let the guys go balls to the wall. Just let them be themselves. Just let them deliver, you know, the kind of matches that they're capable of uh, delivering. And uh, we're just not getting that. But, uh, you know, so let me know what you guys think. Would you love to see Gabe back in Ring of Honor? Is it ever going to happen? How long is Dragon Gate USA and Evolve going to last you know, who knows? I, I don't even know if they're making money. It seems to me like they don't make any money at all. It, it just does. I mean, if you they, they barely anyone shows up to the shows, they don't make any noise. They have no buzz. But then again, when they run in certain venues, like WrestleMania weekend or even in New York, you hear that ticket sales are pretty good. So maybe it just depends on the location with uh, with that product. But uh, I, I just don't know. I just, I just don't... Um, with Gabe Sapolsky, he accomplished so much, and I just feel like he's just treading water right now. You know, but I, I, I think now is the time where the Indies just have to uh, pull together again. And you know, maybe the 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 best thing to do to avoid that co bullshit contract situation, just to bring everybody back together again. You know, but uh, the guy out there in Dragon Gate. Whoever is the official president, see, Gabe Sapolsky is the vice president of Dragon Gate USA, but the, the official president of Dragon Gate USA, you know, I, I, if, you know, maybe he just needs to think about just, you know, ending the partnership. This way, it'll allow ROH to eventually, you know, branch out and do some more work with Dragon Gate to help their international scene out as well. So, because I think Dragon Gate would benefit more from working with the other indies other than just, you know, the Gabe guys. That's how I feel about that. But um, I don't know, guys. Let me know. It's been five years already since Gabe has uh, gotten fired. In retrospect, was it a good thing? Was it a bad thing? I give Gabe a lot of credit because, you know, he, he always, I think he always uh, was clear that, you know, that, that the Ring of Honor wasn't ready for TV. And I think he ended up being pretty much right. I don't think Ring of Honor works on television at all especially with the oversaturation on the mainstream product. So, all right, thanks, guys. Uh, let me know what you think, and uh, take it easy.